United, of course, lost to Aston Villa over the weekend, right? Aston Villa beat Manchester United at home, which I think for most people who have watched us play this season, especially the last few matches, it shouldn't be a surprise. Most people that watched us play last season also shouldn't be surprised either, and the season before that. Because unfortunately, unlike you know, despite our pretty decent league position finishes, the actual football we play under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer isn't great. And we don't seem to have like a designated or distinguishable style of play. Well, even a style of play that's maybe going to bring out the best in the players that we have available. You know, um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer likes to talk a lot about fast attacking players and counter attacking football. But unfortunately, you can't play that way all the time against all the teams because some of the lesser teams or some of the teams that just want to adopt better tactics will decide to kind of drop off, defend with a low block, and then instantly that space you want to run into isn't available. So you're unable to win. And sometimes even if the space is available, it doesn't mean necessarily just because you've got all your attacking players on the pitch, you're going to necessarily outscore or outgun the other side that you're facing. So a lot of people have always had trep, you know, hesitations about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's tenure. There seems some issues there. They think that even though like that, the fact that we signed Sancho, Varane and Ronaldo only one window, a lot of fans didn't think that was going to be enough for him to win the league or to win a trophy. Forget the league, just to win a trophy, even a league cup, which obviously we got knocked out of in a week as well. No one really thought that was ever going to happen. And I think a lot of the fans who are quote unquote Oli out were quite reasonable, I felt, in their assertion, especially off the back of what Tuchel did at Chelsea. Unfortunately, a lot, I know a lot of people kind of get upset about that example being used, but it's an example that we have to use because it's something that is kind of um, a sort of like for like comparison in a, in, in a way, right? Because Lampard is ex experience wise um, was far less experienced than someone like an Oli Gunnar Solskjaer who's got like 10 years experience in the game um, he obviously came through with a far less um, you know he had managed less clubs of course than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and the fact that he was failing so much at Chelsea despite being a club legend and despite being given the resources and then for him to get sacked in the middle of the season crucial to come in take over and take them from like seventh where they were to I think third and then they obviously won a Champions League it showed people that sometimes you know even though a lot of people said that Chelsea team needed a lot of work um, Lampard was the one that was saying that they were far, far off from challenging for the title and winning any trophies. But then Tuchel immediately got them believing. And now they're in this season. Obviously, it'd be a big step for them to go to third to f from third to first. But they were still an understanding that this is what kind of elite coaching looks like. And unfortunately, Lampard maybe will become a better coach in the future for it. But at this current moment, he probably isn't at the level needed to survive the cutthroat industry of football that occupies that kind of top echelon. That's what a lot of people were saying about Oli. That's it. Just saying that maybe he's, you know, he's done a good job now. He's stabilized us. He's kind of taken over from... Um, Mourinho, who was incredibly toxic and made Old Trafford um, a very poisonous and venomous, you know, place to be. A lot of kind of, I think I've I said before in a few other Twitter spaces that I've been in, um, that I think a lot of the division um, amongst United fans about it's Oli in, Oli out, people that go to the game and don't go to the game, and all this kind of stuff, give him time, don't give him time. I think majorly spawned from the Jose Mourinho area, era, sorry, he made uh, the fan base very, very toxic and people kind of fighting against each other, which doesn't necessarily solve anything because you know the common enemy that we have is definitely the Glazers and the ownership and how they've kind of run this football very poorly over the years bloody blah 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 Oli's not that great of a manager as has been proven so far and I think the general consensus I thought this season going into it was I think a lot of people were basically wondering myself included would it be possible for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to win a trophy with great players despite his clear indeficiencies or kind of mistakes that he does when it comes to substitutions tactic selections from time to time any manager does it but he seems to do them a lot he seems to kind of do them often in the kind of big clutch moments he's he seems to fire on one side and then of course the players then seem to fail again on the pitch themselves who knows it's because of his instructions or because of themselves but we don't know but i'll say i was going into the season thinking to myself hey can this guy potentially win us a trophy despite him being quite an average coach and we've seen evidence of it before Roberto Di Matteo at Chelsea won the Champions League again he's not much of a manager I'm not sure if he's even managing a club at this at this present moment in time but quite soon after that new season he was sacked he was sacked of course because he didn't do a good job but that was further proof that you can maybe get a caretaker manager to come in especially if the team has stacked with experienced um serial winners they could maybe kind of you know um um stabilize things and kind of get themselves over the line when they're playing cup competition right which is basically one of games of the one of game but it's quite hard to do that in the league nearly impossible 
you know, sustained it over um, a Premier League season is quite difficult. You don't win the league by a fluke. You don't win the league with having a terrible manager. You need to basically have, you know, a pretty decent team um, and a great manager in order to kind of win the league. And so far, we've seen with how we started in the league so far and maybe the last three results in combination that maybe Oli may, uh, might not be the guy, especially with the players we have available now because, you know, the only pushback you hear from people is like, oh, we need a DM, we need a DM. But we've got enough players on the pitch, enough quality, enough people to choose from to make a pretty decent team that we shouldn't be losing at home to Aston Villa. Don't get me wrong. You're not going to win every single game in the league. I understand that. But you should lose um, your more... Your, your games against maybe your bogey sides away from home, maybe against your kind of title rivals from time to time, but you shouldn't be leave, losing, I think, banker three pointers, even against Aston Villa, especially Aston Villa, uh, you know, without a Jack Grealish, who are in this kind of transition period where they're trying to find their feet. You should be kind of putting these teams to bed or at least, you know, coming away with it the draw and then going again next game. So we lose at the end, you know, with a header and then miss a penalty in Bruno Fernandes that thought, of course, was the icing on the cake. But it looks like suddenly now the press and the media who were very protective of Oli, who were basically making every excuse under the book under the sun for him, are suddenly starting to change their tune. And I'm quite conflicted by it because I think a lot of the times football media, football journalism is super um, reactive it's super knee jerk no one's ever proactive no one's ever thinking about things long term or you know kind of specking things out and saying okay let's follow some trends let's answer some data from before everything's just short term knee jerk kind of reactions and fans were raising reservations about Ollie's um you know, ability to lead this team after his second season at the club, maybe beginning of his third. They were seriously thinking, hey, if he's not able to win a trophy, maybe even last season, um, maybe it might be time just to kind of hand this team over to an actual better coach. Of course, some people view it as unfair, but quite clearly, there's not shown any evidence so far that he's got any ability to win as a trophy. And I think this season, especially with the League Cup, forget the Europa League, that's facing a pretty decent Villarreal side. Again, you know, with, with a great coach and a great history of, you know, European competitions or one of cup competition games in general. Fair enough. Um, you might go out tactic in the final, whatever. But I thought the League Cup is a bit of a gimme. It's a bit of an easy trophy to win because most Premier League sides definitely usually fill their weakened teams because they don't really want to be in a competition anymore. So you can progress quite quickly and quite far, especially with the FA Cup only starting next year. The League Cup would have been a great way just to claim a free trophy, put that in your cabinet, and then shut up everyone that says you haven't won a trophy. And then immediately, I think a free trophy would instantly buy um, Oli another season. Instantly. Maybe even 18 months, that would instantly get him if he would have won that trophy. But the fact that he didn't go for it, the fact that he made 11 changes, thinking that he could rotate in that way, um, just showed me that he lacks that killer edge, that real kind of, you know what Mourinho did when he was kind of cringy and he was like holding up the four fingers or the three fingers, I forgot it was because we won the Europa League and he was including the charity shield or something, something stupid like that, right? It's a bit cringe, but I like the fact that when he comes in, he wants to win the first trophy available, whether it's a community shield, the league cup, it doesn't matter. He wants to get a trophy in the in the bank, in a trophy cabinet, sorry. And he wants to instill that winning mentality into his squad so that they know he means business. Like we want to win everything inside, everything inside. So every game is crucial. And at United, you have to do that. You can't just coast along waiting for things to develop and get better. You have to win trophies. And now it looks like the tide is finally changing. People are starting to expect a little bit more from Oligan Solskjaer. As you can see from this headline, courtesy of the Manchester Evening News, article written by Samuel Luckhurst, it says Oligan Solskjaer is not managing United um, with tactics. And then you've got here, um, duh, 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 duh. you've got no. This is, yeah, you've got this clip again from the Sky Sports News of Gary Never talking in his podcast about how he feels um, Ligana Solskjaer is managing and the deficiencies he's saying he's seeing. And this is all the stuff that we've been saying. We've been like, everyone that's been kind of critical of Oli and his tenure and his coaching has always said it's all individual brilliance. We don't really have any coaching. We have any systems of play outside of the counter attack. Um, it looks like we rely on individual brilliance. If our individual players don't show up, we generally lose games. We concede goals all the time. We don't really play well. Uh, Brighton play a bit of football than us. All these things that we were saying in general on social, now he's trying to echo. And again, it's two years too late, but it's great to hear it regardless. So this is Gary Neville thoughts on Gary on Oligana Solskjaer's tactics and formations off the back of again that loss to Aston Villa in the league away from home. I said it. Even when they were winning, even when Ronaldo scored, they don't play well enough as a team to win this league, in my view. They don't play well enough as a team. Um, I think that you have to be a unit in possession and out of possession. And when But the funny thing is, he said that we don't play well enough as a team. But Gary Neville also said that if we sign Harry Kane, we're going to guarantee us to win a trophy or to win the league, right? To challenge. 
But Harry Kane hasn't scored a goal, I think, what, this season, right? He's on a barren goal run. He's looking miserable, moody, because maybe he didn't secure his transfer to Man City. And he's basically seeing that his career is basically going to be wasted at Spurs because he's a bit of a flat track bully and didn't have ambition and didn't want to push for a move beforehand and didn't work into his contract some sort of exit clause that would allow him to leave. So he's obviously kicking up a bit of stink, I understand. But still, he has himself to blame. But Gary Neville said clearly that if we get Harry Kane in, we're going to challenge or come close. I forgot what it was, but something along the lines of that. And then when, get, when Jerry Rennett pushed back to him and said, hey, they've got Ronaldo, one of the best players in the world, right? Second only to Messi. Why can't he be the one to challenge the league? He was like, no, nah, I still don't see it. So it's 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 never the, it's always the players' fault that he needs. It's always more players that we need. We need more signings. And it's never a question about the coaching. Never. That's never what separates. That's never the deciding factor about why we didn't finish higher up in the league or why we didn't finish with more points or why we didn't maybe challenge for the title. That's never it. It's always the players. Always more players needed. Always more players needed. Always transfer, always transfers. Bit of bullshit, but what can you do? Come on, play. Wow. Play. When you only deliver in moments, those moments won't go for you in certain games. You need patterns of play. You need a way of playing. And I, at this moment in time, still see a group of individuals playing in moments with some patterns and combinations at time, but still a team that's, you know, some of them pretty new together. Obviously, Ronaldo, Varane, Sancho's not settled in yet. Uh, but... They've got to come together as a team and start to define a style of play. And then you start to get results when you don't play well. And I think the way they are at the moment, they'll always have days like that yesterday. They'll have patches of, you know, four or five games where they'll only win two. But then they'll go and win 15 on the bounce and be unbeaten away from home for I don't know how long. That's the type of team they are. I have called them the odd bunch. Because I still look at them and think as though they're a team that wins games in moments. When I look at Chelsea and I look at Liverpool and I look at City, they're teams. They, 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 they put teams. Okay, then what's the issue? Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been in a tenure for three years. Why hasn't he put a team together that can challenge? Why hasn't he constructed that? Why we don't we have a defensive midfielder? Clearly, we could need one. Clearly, at the moment, Fred and McTominay isn't the answer. Matic is getting a bit long in the tooth. So we need to have somebody that can either sit in that position on their own or play as a two with either Pogba, a Van der Beek or whoever, I don't care. That's not happened so far. Why hasn't that happened? Why in three years has it not happened? So on one hand, you can credit Oli for re you know, rejuvenating uh, United and bringing back the good vibes and allowing people to smile again. But on the other side, if that's the case and he gets all that praise for doing that, he also needs some criticism for not entirely making us a cohesive team. We can't be reliant on individual brilliance to win league titles and trophies. Trophies maybe you can do. We got close to it with Europa League final, of course, last season. But in cons on a consistent basis, it's very difficult for you to kind of win things on a consistent basis, right? Back to back. Um, playing that way you have to have a system of play that allows you to play well despite some of your players maybe having an off day because you create you know patterns of play ways of playing uh sustained pressure tactics and formations that allow you to bring the best out of your players at the moment we just don't have it and this is again Ole Gunnar Solskjaer basically describing his tactics pretty openly and pretty clearly and this is everything that the fans have been talking about but whenever the fans talk about it it's always a bit like we're hating we're not giving him the guy credit he needs but this is essentially Oli describing his system of play and wanting to detail it and the funny thing is allegedly according to Johnny who I follow on Twitter about United News Oli was asked a question about his style of play a thing a couple of press conferences ago uh, by this dude Car Anchor I think his name is who helped write Marcus Rashford's book that's out at the moment and he basically asked him a question and he's a bit of an Oli inner like he's a bit of a fan of Oli right and he was asking him the question about his style of play in a kind of positive way to kind of be like hey why don't you shut up the haters and tell me about what kind of systems you want to play and what things you want the, the, the kind of probing him like hey I spoke to you last time let me know you know kind of tell me what you told them and Oli just refused to answer it or didn't want to answer it or didn't have an answer for it and essentially just said you know tactics and talking about the nuances of the game is overrated there's not a real need of it it's kind of going it's extra if you don't have good players you do good like just basically saying passion is basically the name of the game and it was like huh and again, this is a, the, the problem again for Oli is that it's in contrast with the two shows of this world. It's in contrast with the Klops. It's in contrast with the Peps, who are very kind of um, 
you know, enthusiastically bubbly guys who are super, super addicted to football and tactics and coaching. You know, you can't get Klopp to shut up about how he wants to develop a team and how he develops youngsters and transfer targets he has and styles of play. You can't get those guys to shut up. If you speak to them about football, Pep, Tuchel, Klopp in press conferences, they perk up straight away. Ask them about transfers and all that sort of stuff. They get a little bit tired and bored of it. But ask them about actual tactics and why you decided this and that. And duh, 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 duh. They love that sort of stuff. But with Oli, he seems to not like it. He just wants to talk about passion, um, fitness, um, you know, tenacity, all these things, pace, all these things that have nothing to do with actually being technically good at the game and understanding it. And I think that is what is causing, again, a disconnect with Oli and his tenure. Because at the moment, we're not, because I think it would be okay. If it worked, no one would care. It's sort of like Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho is only a problem for your team if that style of football doesn't work. But if it works, you don't give a toss that you park the bus. You don't give a toss that he height. He kind of buys players based on their height, weight and age. You don't care. But as long as it soon as it doesn't get results, you also you soon as it doesn't get results, you have a problem with it. Same goes for Oligan and Solskjaer. The style of play we're adopting at the moment isn't working. Um, his way of playing the football, playing football isn't working. The players aren't responding in the right ways, even though we've got all the right players, quote unquote. It's not working at the moment, so naturally going to get pushed back. But again, this is Oligan and Solskjaer explaining his style of play, and it's pretty fancy, fascinating. Sorry. The definition of the Oligan and Solskjaer style. And how does it blend into the Manchester United way of traditionally playing? Of course, I've been affected by my many, many years here as a player. And uh, then as a coach, uh, after I was a player, now I've, I come back as a manager. The traditionally best Man United teams have quick attacks, fast players. We break quickly. Uh, we got quality individuals. We got uh, width. We got uh, individuals who can make a difference. Um, I think if you see a re like a video reel of the best goals, many many goals are individual quality or fast attacks, quick counter attacks. See Ronaldo's free kicks or Rooney's and Ronaldo's counter. So yeah, that's basically it. individual brilliance, right? And again, let's go back to this article. It says your yeah, main life title challenging squad. Uh, have a chance to squad, but some doubts persist as to whether they can have a title challenge manager. New spirit to Santa was always um, on to hiding at Tottenham with the club's uh, initial aversion to appointing him as well as being a replacement. Nuno was dismissed because of his compact style and deemed expensive. Weeks later, Spurs appointed him. For a manager whose Wolves programme notes were shorter than a footnote, Nuno was laudably forthright after Tottenham's embarrassing loss against Sunderland, saying a lot of things went wrong starting with the decision I made. The game plan didn't work. I'm honest. I have to say that. I decided bad. I take that right decision and I refuse to go up more further than that. The surgeon Daniel leave his approval ratings um that the naive Kane brothers triggered a brief to this but anyway Oligan Solskjaer bristled at questions about the choice of penalty taker and Cristiano's reaction as he strode up the pitch punching the corner flag en route to a tunnel Solskjaer mumbled usual penalties and cliches when talking about accountability would be received favorably around match goers he said instead um there was another Adoni, um, anodyne analysis of the officiating of the Premier League. The video system referee is a subjective and inconsistent system that is erratic pitch referees, but is here to stay. David Gea was not getting to Courtney House's header, regardless of the offside. Solskjaer's aversion, sorry, Solskjaer's diversion tactics are about as successful as his on pitch tactics. He is not a natural enough orator to put them at the top of the agenda, and there is karma for the pre match ca uh, carping about the series of penalties when Bruno sent his spot kick into orbit, which is true. There is you know, he did kind of complain about it because he thought that Klopp's comments about our penalties and frequency of getting penalties last season maybe affected the fact that we haven't had a couple of penalties this season. United supporters were instead miffed at another goal conceded from a set piece and another delayed attack and substitution. Solskjaer was compromised by the unforced withdrawal of Luke Shaw and Harry Maguire. There was an there was an inordinate wait for a proactive move and Ezra Cavani was not the most um, strategic of choices. The tone was set within the risk aversion midfield of Scott McTominay and Fred and they have the started three in this they, they have started in three of the six Premier League fixtures and has Scott McTominay not acquired a groin injury um, groin, groin surgery sorry last month that the midfield access might have been the same for all six matches of course because he said that's his preferred system. This is where I think Oli lets himself down. I think you're always going to lose games. It's obviously standard. But I think the decision-making choices in terms of substitutions and tactics and what to do to affect the game always kind of leave me a bit miffed. So the Harry Maguire thing is a good example. He allegedly got injured, I think, just before half-time, I think, if I'm not mistaken, 
maybe just after he got something, some sort of injury when he was wanting to stretch for something or whatever it may be. And he was clearly disrupted by it, a grain injury or something along the kind of lines, right? Um, something went wrong. And uh, obviously, you know, he's a captain, even though I think, you know, it's pretty uh, lucky to be captain of United considering, you know, how average he is as a defender. But regardless, he's our captain. He's our marquee centre-back in the terms of, you know, the fee and the profile, blah, 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 not profile, maybe the fee. So I understand maybe the kind of hesitancy and not to take him off straight away. You want to see it help him, let him kind of run it off. But considering we're playing against such a fast, attacking, aggressive kind of Aston Villa side... And especially when you consider the kind of the flow of the game, it would have made more sense to just make an executive decision and get him off the pitch as soon as possible, especially if we were struggling, because, you know, he's not got the pace necessary anyway to kind of keep up with those players as they're kind of pinging in around him. So it would have made more sense just to kind of change it up and get someone else off on the pitch. Cool. The Edison Cavani change towards the end, again, probably came too late. And in my opinion, might have been the worst decision to make because there was space that what that we had to basically exploit because Villa were pushing far up and they had their full backs kind of trying to ping back our full backs but it led us a lot of space behind with their free centre backs just to attack them I would have maybe brought on either a Lingard or a Sancho to basically stretch their defence a little bit and maybe even a wild card in Martial but I don't think Ed's Cavani was the best decision at that time now of course he was a compromise in that position because Luke Shaw and Harry Maguire go from as a, as a, you know enforced injuries so you only have one substitute left but I still think you could have made something a little bit more astute you could have been a little bit more clever with what you kind of put out there on a the pitch to change things around that would have made far better that would have made maybe a far more impactful difference in terms of how we played but again we move it continues as United have a auspicious so auspicious, sorry, win percentage of 58% when McTominay and Fred in lineup, losing just 10 of 55 matches. They were the midfield pair in duo. They were the midfield duo in Paris. The guy Neville asked where Scotia wanted his statue to be eradicated, erected, sorry. The breakup of the McFred also is a consequence of the Europa League final when Solskjaer overloaded the front six, refused to drop and overplayed, underperforming Marcus Rashford, and failed to make a single attack and substitution um, against an ob. ob uh, obdurant, obdurant opponents. <laughs> that's fun. That's enough diplomacy. McTominay and Fred do not have the makings of a title challenge in Giro, Never will. Roy King called it a unit a year ago. He said they won't get United back to winning titles. Each player is good, dependable squad option, and there is merit to reprogramming uh, McTominay to keep a vigil at the base of the midfield. Which I don't think it's true. I actually think McTominay's best position is as a number eight. He's clearly a better box to box midfielder than he is as a conventional six or a four sitting, yeah, you know, six slash five sitting in that defensive uh, double pivot. I think he'll work far better in a four three three bombing forward. Um, I think you know again if you played for a smaller club and he was able to play as an attacking midfielder, you'd see the best of him because he's very tenacious he's got a good engine on him he could obviously got a decent shot shooting ability he can head the ball he's obviously physically um pretty big and strong all those things are kind of necessary to play in that kind of position and be that kind of marauding kind of midfielder but in terms of playing a disciplined number six number five role in the base of a midfield for Man United and requiring to basically transition and spray the ball around that just isn't his game he's not Declan Rice he never will be in that regard um it continues says McTominay but the dependence on them together underlines undermines social status too often he does not manage like your united manager should for the thrashings of five goal holes social is a stickler for pragmatism and his managerial mentality is at times more molder than united um villa were always likely to retain a back three even though the in ineligible and axel tonzebi which demanded a creative midfield um social um social um eroded this uh, on the side of caution preoccupied by villa's front two of ollie watkins and danny ings imagine the flip philip in the villa dressing room when they scanned the team sheet so united have deprived themselves of a fifth forward with jesse lingard did central donny van der beek on the bench um it's a little surprise united dropped points against the outside the leap um, when their manager is so easily caught between two stalls, he reacted to a red card against them, a fourth team side in Swiss League, by switching to a back three. United played for a 1 0 and then for a draw and then got neither. They got what they deserved. United have lost three of their last four games, departing one competition, so an inquest is obligatory, especially after the manager selected an unchanged 11 when United were a kick away from drawing the week before. There's no rhyme or reason for fielding the same side against Villa that had performed so sporadically against West Ham, and it's inconceivable 
Noble that had Mark Noble struck the ball beyond David De Gea's reach that Solskjaer would have had at least one change in six days later. It's inexplicable how Fred retained his league place after a ramshackle performance against London and one can only imagine what key made a Brazilian chucking, chuckling seconds after spooning his ball into touch. United's adversaries have raised their bar in recent years and Solskjaer needs to respond. It doesn't, if he doesn't, he's onto a hiding. But that's why I, that's why I disagree. I don't necessarily think he's going to go anywhere. I think at the moment, our owners have basically shown us and proved over the years that as long as Solskjaer gets, as long as our managers get top four football, it's very difficult for them to justify sacking them because essentially they use United as a basically, a, you know, a, a flipping cash point um, to to kind of take out dividends for the club. So as long as we're able to make top four football and secure um you know, Premier League, sorry, secure European football and get that money in from the TV rights and whatnot, then we're basically good. And kind of winning trophies is kind of a second, it's kind of something that comes, you know, second, especially if you're able to secure high profile signings, you get them to sell shirts and all that and all that stuff. So if Solskjaer can get off our football, I really do worry for our club in that we might kind of, you know, just slowly trudge along into obs obscurity without really doing much. And I'd much rather we be proactive and decide that, hey, Solskjaer has maybe been one of the most important director of football that's not a director of football in the club's history in terms of what he's been able to do in terms of changing around our fortunes and kind of revamping the squad and making us believe again especially after the disastrous tenures we've had in previous managers and that should be noted and kind of clapped and adored and sort of applauded from afar but then it's time to hand this over to an actual elite manager who can take our players to another level and you hope to do so because Klopp has shown it he can do you know he can make wonders out of kind of fairly you know average and players that you probably wouldn't really you know kick up much of a fuss about the Rigas I look at as likes of right even the Shakiris are now Leon he was able to get those players to kind of perform for him and step up when need be and they were able to create some monumentally historic historical moments um, for Liverpool in their history um, obviously Tuchel has done it his way too maybe he's had a bit a bigger checkbook same with Pep but they still have an ability to coach their side they don't just simply buy players and that's it they still coach they still get them to perform at elite level and still they kind of fall short but on a consistent level they're always consist competing for trophies competing for the league and if we want that for United we're probably going to have to change manager that's just the nature of the game, isn't it? But, you know, what do I know?